What's happening, YouTube? I hope you're having a fantastic day. I am having a great day. Today we're going to be talking about plants, and this topic is going to be my top five worst beginner plants. All right, now these are going to be a contradiction because everything I'm going to list are all plants that you're going to hear from dozens and dozens of YouTubers and aquascapers that say these are the easiest and the best. And uh, they're not. You want to know why? Because I have hands-on experience with hundreds and hundreds of plants. I've made all the mistakes that beginners would make. And all of these plants that are so-called beginner plants all have major factors that are very easy to goof up and it all just goes wrong on you. So I'm probably going to name a couple plants and you're going to be like, oh God, I'm glad it wasn't just me. So uh, number one, my number one worst beginner plant that you can start off with are java ferns. Yes, I said it. Java ferns. I'm probably the only YouTuber who will tell you not to start with that plant. They are terrible beginner plants. For one, if you failed, and a lot of people have, I get comments all the time on my channel being like, I can't even keep Java ferns alive. You're not the only one. The mistake happens all the time, and it's super easy, and the first part has to do with lighting. If it's just simply slightly too bright, um, the plant is going to die. Now the problem is, is that it's going to die anyway because java ferns actually do go through a melting process, which takes a long, long time. Okay, so one, you don't know if it's actually going through its uh, transitional phase, which can take six months or if it's straight up dying on you because you just have the light slightly too bright or there's a nutrient deficiency going on. They grow so slow that it's extremely hard to determine what is happening. So let's pretend you're not actually killing it and it's going through its transitional period. Well, it's all gonna melt each giant leaf that you get and while it's melting, you're going to see this. Awkwardly weird crocomalaca. They duplicate. If a plant if a plant could be identified as being called creepy, java ferns would be it. The way they multiply is creepy. Alright, so here's an old leaf. Okay? This leaf is, is actually a year old. Here is its mess of babies growing off the top. All right, so if you're not killing it, you're waiting on the old leaf to actually melt and die and then grow these little new babies that you then pluck off and have to replant. And not in your substrate. That's the other thing people make mistake is they don't study it first and think that they can just stick it in their dirt and it's fine. No, it's got to be attached to something. Anyway, it is a plant that you have to deal with for months, and a lot of people get confused. They, you know, they either are actually killing it because the light's too bright, or they just think they're killing it because it's turning black, and that's just part of the process. So, I'm going to give you um, alternate plants to go with, um, as opposed to the ones that I'm telling you you shouldn't start with. Don't start with java ferns. They're uh, much too much work. It's extremely confusing, especially as a beginner. Instead, go with the Nubius. Anubias do melt, but not like Java ferns. It, it, you, you may lose one or two leaves, but it's not in massive amounts. You can definitely tell if you're killing it. Um, they grow slow. Yes, it's a low light, but you can tell if you're giving it too much light because instead of it immediately turning black, um, it'll start to grow uh, algae on top of it. So if you start to see a lot of algae growing on top of the leaves, you know to crank the light down. It's not nearly as confusing. 
it doesn't have nearly as much melt back if any you, um, you know and you can buy it large small if you buy them already fully grown they grow so slow you just have a full-grown plant you know so go with the Nubius over Java ferns all right number two worst aquarium plant to start off with Java moss yes it is suggested by many that is it an easy plant it is an easy plant it's an easy plant to get all over the freaking place Java moss grows completely out of control and when you get it in your tank you will never get it out it doesn't just grow like a little cluster it grows like a spider web over everything you ever like looked in your closet, uh, in your attic, and then a year later looked up there again, and you just see cobwebs everywhere? Okay, that's Java moss, right? Um, and while it's growing everywhere, if you give it too much light, not only does it grow all over the place, but it also starts growing massive amounts of hair algae everywhere. That you know, and you just can't get it off. And yes, Java moss will grow in your glass. And it just gets in the pores of glass. Glass does have microscopic holes. And it'll dig its way in there and just start growing all over it. You, you can't get rid of it. it. If you do it right, it grows everywhere. And if you do it wrong, it still grows everywhere and brings new scent hair algae with it. So instead, it, a great beginner moss to start off with, which actually isn't a moss, is called uh, Subwasser Tang. All right, and when I'm done, I'm going to show you all these plants. I have all these, so I give examples and I show. All right, so if you want to start with a plant like a moss, start with Subwasser Tang. It grows slow. It doesn't care if it's high lights, low lights, whatever. It doesn't have any special requirements. You just put it in your tank, and it doesn't accumulate any nastiness of algae or anything like that it, it, it the plant will do you don't have to do anything all right number three worst aquarium plant to start off with as a beginner amazon swords you heard it yep is it an easy plant sure is does it grow quick absolutely does it take much work no so why does it make it a terrible beginner plant well i'll tell you why because they get massive quickly, their root structure is huge. Just one in a 40 gallon tank, its root structure will spread out throughout the entire bottom of your tank and steal all the nutrients from everything. All right, and rapidly. This plant eats nutrients, uh, I mean, like, like it has continual diarrhea. I, I mean, it just. You're, it'll go through a uh, you know, normal root tab, supposed to last six months. It'll suck everything out of a root tab in a few weeks. If you're using a nutrient-rich substrate, like something expensive, like fluval, um, that's supposed to last around a year or so, it'll suck it out in three months. You're, you're constantly having to feed it, and as it's getting massive and taking up the entire tank, anything else you have planted that's a rooted plant, they're all going to die. They will not survive this massive overtake by Amazon swords. So, my suggestion, instead, get rosette swords or sword compactas. They are virtually the same, but they only grow a few inches instead of several feet like Amazon swords grow several feet tall and several feet wide. I mean, it, it, it'll grow so big, it'll uh, you won't even be able to have fish in there. You, you just have a tank with a plant. So, go with rosette swords or uh, sword compacts. All right, number four, worst beginner plants, and uh, our dwarf chain sword. Dwarf chain sword is not a beginner friendly plant and it can't even grow without CO2 for one thing and aquarium co-op actually sells it and suggests it as a beginner plant. I have tried it many many times 
And unless you grow it super close to the surface, it's just not going to happen. It, it, it's all going to die off. Um, instead of Dwarf Chain Sword, start, uh, get Dwarf Sagittaria or Narrow Leaf Chain Sword instead. Both of those are, are both runner plants. Um, don't require much, can go in high or low lights, doesn't matter, and um, are much easier, trust me. Um, so, and then last on my list are stem plants. I mean, I don't like any of them. I, I, I mean, I really don't for several reasons. I have two in particular that tick me off the most, but one, they're high maintenance. Uh, you constantly have to. They, they need trimming and upkeep all the time. Um, but I'll, I'll narrow it down to two, specifically Bacopa and Cardinals. All right, these plants, they look great. They're really skinny, okay? But within days, they get so tall, you're left with these bare bottom stems and these goofy tops. So like once a week, you've got to trim off the bottom and bring them down and do it over and over and over and over. And not only that, when you first plant them, they lose all their leaves anyway. That's just part of it. Um, it there's just It's way too much upkeep for a beginner to constantly be having to check a plant that needs uh, trimming. And if you don't know, eventually what happens is they just grow so tall and, and stringy, eventually they just float up out of the substrate and are just loose. It's just chaotic. Um, instead... I suggest for a beginner friendly type of uh, stem plant, uh, these are floaters instead. Guppy grass, water sprite, or hornwort. Okay, all of these are stem plants and they don't even need to be in the substrate. They can be floated and their upkeep is much easier. You can just go in there and simply just rip off a chunk and you're done. All right, so. I'm going to show you all of these plants um, and let you see for yourself what they look like and let's go from there. So, All right, we are back. I got my hand in the tweezers and I'm going to poke out, point out the nuisance and then uh, point out the better plants. So let's start off with java ferns. This mess of java ferns back here, it's been here for over a year, and I'm still dealing with it. These are the babies. Anyway, so let's just forget about java fern. Here is some Anubias. This Anubias is a year old, and you know what? They grow in a straight vine and don't, they grow in a straight vine and don't grow all clusteredly weird like java ferns. Anubias. I got Anubias here too. I have... Uh, Anubius all growing on top of there on this driftwood it's in all my tanks all right much easier to deal with and like I said if you if it starts getting some algae you simply just rub it off and it'll do okay next on the list is uh, what I said was no good is a uh, Java moss growing out of control now I'm gonna point it out you see all this on this glass, this is what I have left. I had a, I had some growing here, and some growing here, and it just it became a nightmare. I mean, this is what I have left, but I mean, it started growing. Not only does it just grow on glass and get completely out of control. Now, mind you, I did I've removed massive amounts. It will grow on top and cover your plants as well. It'll start killing plants. This stuff was growing all the way around the freaking tank, and for you know months and months, I've been having to remove it. Look, I mean, this is seriously what's left, like you know, gro growing on uh, the glass. So let me show you what my suggestion was as a more beginner-friendly uh, moss. Uh, it's called Subwaster Tang. This is subwasser tang here. I just have some, this is actually a moss ledge. Grows very slow. It looks great. Let's see if I can give you a, a, 
Oh, no, no good view there. The lighting is terrible. Uh, oh, perfect example. Here we are. Nice, lovely bush of it in my shrimp tank. I actually have two of them. Uh, I know there's some glare, but yeah, they look great. And they're uniformed and, and grows in a clump. All right, so uh, let's see. So, Boster Tang, after that, um, Amazon Swords. You will not see any full grown Amazon Swords because I only had to buy one before I realized it ruins everything. I had one in here in this tank, you know, well over a year ago that took over everything. I had to rip it out and rescape. But here are the replacements this is an Amazon Compacta. It is full grown. It is a year old. Okay. This right here is a Amazon Rosette Sword. See? Small little bushes. Very easy, easily manageable. And then uh, stem plants. I already ripped out all my Bacopa and Cardinals. I had Cardinals back there and Bacopa back there and it's not there anymore because they just I got sick of dealing with them um, just trust me uh, don't go with those so instead I gave you many suggestions this right here is guppy grass see you can just grows loosely in your tank as such um, I also suggested hornwort which is this and hornwort does grow fast but like I said you know you can just you know that and uh, guppy grass you can pull chunks of it off I don't have any water spray uh, alright so now that I've shown you uh, I will leave a list of all uh, of all the don'ts uh, for beginner plants and what in my opinion and from my personal experience is a much easier substitution as a beginner plant for them and I'll make a huge list here on the screen and you can pause it and write it down but yes if you've ever had these plants and you've killed them you're not the only one trust me um, so uh, I appreciate you all watching I hope you learned something you know um, And that's it! See those little awkward pauses? I'm good at being creepy like that. Ooh. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I do appreciate it. I hope you have a wonderful day and a wonderful night. And if you're having a bad day, you're feeling down in the dumps, get up and do something about it. Catch you next time.